Hello, I'm uh, back again with another video, you'll all be glad to hear, and this video is going to be another monthly wrap-up review of the books that I read in May. Aren't we all excited? Aren't we all happy to be here? <laughs> So the first book that I read this month was not actually a book, it was a short story. It was Mr. Salary by Sally Rooney. That's kind of difficult to say, Salary Sally. Anyway, this was a reread for me, but what is it about, you ask? Well, um, in classic Rooney fashion, this short story is about um, a relationship. <laughs> it's about two characters and their relationship. Wouldn't be Sally Rooney without some relationship analysis. She loves her analysis. So the situation that the characters in this short story are in is that we follow the protagonist who is a young kind of college age 20 something year old and her relationship with a family friend. And he is in his mid to late 30s. Um, and I suppose the whole dynamic here is whether or not there's something sexual or romantic there. Um, and I suppose the intrigue is the age difference here. So that's the setup. And given that this um, story is super short, like it's only 30 pages and they're tiny pages, um, Rooney doesn't go into a lot of detail about their relationship and about the intrigue. But I think what's so impressive about this is how much she does manage to say, even though it's so small, you know, and so short. So yeah, for Mr. Salary, I gave it four stars. The next book, I don't think it was actually the next book I read, but the next book I'm gonna talk about um, is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney, because I did pick this up for a reread in May as well. Um, I'm not gonna to talk too much about this book in this video though, because I did just upload a video talking about this book and two other books that I'm gonna talk about in this video. Um, so I won't talk about them in a lot of detail, but I will just briefly talk about this one. Um, so as we all know, this follows two friends, Francis and Bobby, and their relationship with a married couple, Nick and Melissa. Um, and again, it's all about relationships. And I loved it. I just think Rooney is so astute. Like she's so good at picking up on the subtleties of how we all interact with each other um, and just like what it's like to be a person. <laughs> So yeah, overall I really enjoyed conversations on my reread and I ended up bumping it up from a four star to a five star um, rating. So there you go. The next two books I'm gonna talk about are the other two books that I talk about in the video I just mentioned, just to get them out of the way. So the first one of those is Show Them A Good Time by Nicole Flattery. Um, anyone who watched that other video will know that I pretty much hated this book. Show Them A Good Time is a collection of short stories by Nicole Flattery and they're all about, you know, young women um, just doing things and that's it. I mean, these, these stories are character studies, but in order to be able to pull off a book like that, you have to be good at writing characters. And unfortunately, Flattery didn't come across as being able to write characters well. They were much too abstract and much too annoying and much too cynical for me to care. Um, so I didn't like it. Then the other book that I talked about in that video, that famed video, I've mentioned it multiple times now, um, was Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This book was a bit of a polarizing book for me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so this book follows Ava, who is a 22 year old um, woman working in Hong Kong as an English language teacher. And again, it is a character focused book and um, not that much of a plot and it's about her relationships with two people Julian and Edith. What I liked about this story was the wit like you can tell that Nisha Dolan is a funny gal but as I say in that other video I didn't like how much you could tell that you were just reading Nisha Dolan's opinions on the world and it just took me too much out of the story. I ended up giving this about like a 3.75 star rating, um, which I know is a bit pernickety, but I think it reflects my relationship with the book adequately. So that was that one. Now we're gonna go on to a book that I really didn't like. No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. Um, now, before I go into why I didn't like this book, which I didn't, I want to give a disclaimer. 
This is not me saying that I don't like Greta Thunberg. I admire Greta Thunberg hugely. I think she's amazing. I admire her guts, her bravery, her resilience. And I think she is speaking about the biggest issue that we are all facing, which is the climate crisis. Um, and that's necessary and important. And I'm a big fan. However, this book is just not great. <laughs> And the reason for that is that it's, yeah, it's a compilation of speeches and I just really feel like this is not the way in which to consume her speeches. And I think the real issue with trying to read her speeches in book form is that, you know, the nature of her giving speeches is that she's going to repeat herself because she's talking about the same thing, she's giving the same message, but she's talking to different people each time. So it's perfectly okay for her to repeat things in her speeches. But when you're reading it in book format, what happens is that you, you know, you'll read something and then like three or four pages later, you'll read the exact same paragraph, pretty much copied and pasted. So yes, for that reason, I just found this difficult to read. Ah, treading dangerous ground, I know. So the next few books that I read were all on my Kindle. And the first of those was This Green and Pleasant Land by Aisha Malik. This book is about a Muslim family who live in a small rural village in England and I suppose the the plot um, is kicked off by the fact that the kind of man of this family, um, whose name is Bilal, his mother dies at the very beginning of the book. It's not a spoiler, it's literally the plot and her dying wish is for Bilal to build a mosque in this small village that he lives in. And so the story is about kind of following um, Bilal coming to terms with the fact that this was his mother's dying wish and that he should probably fulfill it. But then it's also about the village's reaction to him trying to build this mosque. And what I really liked about this book was that it was a real deep dive into all sides of this story, right? It wasn't just told from the perspective of Bilal or his wife, and nor was it just told from the perspective of the villagers who were opposing the building of this mosque. Um, you really got like a full view of all of their opinions and all of their thoughts. And I found that to be a really nuanced and thoughtful way of dealing with this. And there wasn't really anything about this book that I didn't like, you know, it was written very well. I thought the pacing was very good. And I thought it was so timely. I mean, especially now with all of the Black Lives Matter movement, but even given all of that and given the positive things that I have to say about this book, it just didn't sing for me, you know? And I know that's like, how do you measure that, right? But you, you know when you've read a book that really affects you and really impacts you and stays with you. And this one just kind of, didn't. So I think at the time when I finished it I gave it about a three star rating. I think now I would bump it up to like 3.5 or 3.75 again. There comes that rating. The next book then is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. So this book follows Kaya Clark who at the beginning of the book is a young girl and she lives on marshland in North Carolina and this book is set in the 1950s and 60s mainly. And it's about five things predominantly. Let's see if I can count now. Let's see if it is actually five things. <laughs> the first thing is following Kaya's life. The second is that it follows Kaya's relationship with her family, which is strained. And by strained, I mean pretty much non-existent because they've all abandoned her. It's also about um, her relationship with two men, um, Tate and Chase. It's about the murder of Chase and it's about how people in the surrounding townland treat Kaya. Oh it was five, it was five, I did it, okay. And it was just brilliant, it was like the perfect mix of intrigue and nature writing, right? Like the nature writing in this was phenomenal, it was so beautifully written, but what's so great is that it's not just the nature writing, right? It's got a really strong plot going on as well with the discovery of the murder and that whole kind of investigation and everything that ensues from that. Oh, it's so brilliant. It's just really brilliant. I loved it. It was so like beautiful and haunting at the same time and I would highly recommend it. So I gave this five stars. Loved it. 
I loved it. I loved it. Okay. Is that okay with you all? Because I loved it. <laughs> okay. Then, the last book you'll all be delighted to hear, Educated by Tara Westover. Um, oh, such a good book. Such a good book. Um, Educated is a memoir by Tara Westover about Tara's life um, growing up in a fundamentalist Mormon family in Idaho and it's predominantly the father who is a real fundamentalist when it comes to being a Mormon and I suppose the reason it's called Educated is that the family also don't believe in traditional school um, and traditional schooling and Tara has pretty much received no education throughout her life and her memoir goes through her discovery of education and what it does for her and it's just astounding to read about her journey. Yeah, I inhaled this book, I read it in like 24 hours, just couldn't stop reading so yeah, I would highly recommend this and I gave it, surprisingly, five stars. I'm so glad that I'm finishing off this video with the books that I loved um, in May because it would be a, it would be a bit sad to finish on the, the lows but yeah. Take care and I'll uh, see you in the next video because I actually seem to be doing this like this seems to be kind of a thing now right? Like this is fun. Um, yeah. Bye! <laughs>